Hi, I'm Maureen. This is Energy Medicine Yoga. Um, energy Medicine Yoga is a synthesis of just what it sounds like, energy medicine uh, and the practice of yoga, both based on ancient techniques that draw together very similar themes from many different energy traditions. Some you'll be familiar with, um, the uh, yoga Indian tradition, um, Chinese medicine, acupuncture, um, the Celtic energy tradition. There are, there are many and they're weaved in together, they're brought together. Uh, Lauren Walker is the creator of energy medicine yoga and she created this system um, by weaving in the methodologies as taught to her by Donna Eden, who um, is a practitioner of energy medicine. All right, this is meant to be more show and less tell. Let's see if I can hold myself to that. Um, the uh, encouragement I would uh, offer is that you check in with how you feel at the beginning of the practice and how you feel at the end of the practice. Don't overthink it. If something's not familiar to you, um, just try to keep an open mind. All right, so having a little bit of loose movement before we begin. And then as you're ready, we'll take a few moments to center. Find a solid um, placement for your feet. Feel strong in your legs. Draw your attention inward by lowering your gaze to look at a static point on the ground or close your eyes. Lift your spine up nice and tall. And just feel that the spine is stacked vertebrae upon vertebrae. You can help that by pulling your shoulder blades together on your back and trying to orient your ears over your shoulders, shoulders over hips, hips over knees, knees over ankles. Place your hands on your thighs, fingertips pointing down. And I encourage you to just breathe naturally to allow yourself to settle and to arrive and to transition from whatever you were doing prior to this. Really bringing your attention into your body. And then together we'll take three deep breaths, taking air in through the nose deeply. And as you exhale, pressing that fresh oxygen down through your body, down the legs, into the feet and into the earth. Follow your own timing, but again, the second inhale, deep inhale through the nose. Fill up, expand your ribs. And as you exhale, imagine pressing that breath down through the body, through the legs, to the feet and into the earth. One last deep inhale. A long, slow, smooth, intentional exhale. And then bring your hands to meet at your heart in Anjali Mudra. Fingertips point up, thumbs rest at your sternum, elbows extend out to the side. Take a moment and set an intention for this practice of yoga. An intention being a single word, an aspiration, something you want more of in yourself, in your life. Take a big deep breath in. And a nice exhale out. And release your hands to your thighs. Open your eyes, palms face forward, let's begin. Your feet are parallel, hips with distance apart. Feet are planted and connected to the earth. Your thighs are firm, draw your belly in, lift your heart up and inhale, arms out wide and up high. Let your arms match the full length of your inhale. The hands meet up overhead as you look up. Turn your palms away and exhale. Release and let your arms match the length of your exhale if it's different from mine. Two more. These are sun breaths. Inhale. Ribs expand. Add to it. Lift your heart up. Really press down through your feet as you reach up and turn your palms away and exhale slowly lower. Let this just gently warm your body up. Last one. Inhale. Uh, we are electromagnetic. We conduct energy. Our hands can carry a charge. A turn, palms turn away when you exhale and can move energy. So just sense this energy within and energy surrounding you. And let it go. 
Let's do the Qigong version of this, but um, soften through your joints. Uh, palms face down, fingers spread apart. Inhale, arms up halfway, exhale, palms up. Inhale, arms up all the way. Exhale as your index finger and thumb meet. Inhale, look up and extend through your spine. Exhale, palms rotate to face down as you bring your energy right down through your central meridian. And release and let it go. Shake it off and let's do the energy wake up. Two fingers, meet the thumb. Uh, you find where the collarbones almost meet, come down an inch and out an inch and then begin tapping. You're tapping vigorously unless it hurts, then you can just circle. And uh, this is about a three minute um, warm up uh, and uh, I ask you to breathe differently for this. You breathe in through the nose and you exhale out through the mouth. We're clearing stagnant energy. Tapping vigorously here, this is the end of the kidney meridian. Your car has an on button, your computer has an on button, and your body has an on button. Tapping in this location at the end of the kidney meridian, it activates and turns on all of the energy systems of your body. Now take one hand to find the center of your sternum, which starts at your breastbone and ends at the collarbone, and begin tapping vigorously, right in the center of it with one hand. You should almost hear this, um, this tapping. Breathing in through the nose, breathing out through the mouth. Mouth. This is uh, related to the thymus in Chinese medicine and is an immune boost. All right, now bring both hands to the upper side ribs. You can use the inside of your fist, those beak fingers, or if it's tender in any way, then you could circle. Meet your body where it's at. Uh, this is the end of the spleen meridian. Off, really often and uh, frequently needs to be nurtured, replenished. Tapping here vigorously. And the last of the tapping is this orbital bone underneath the eye, the delicate area. So just using fingertips and lightly rolling them. It's not the soft tissue, it's the bone, the orbital bone. Breathing in through the nose, don't forget. Breathing out through the mouth. We're clearing stagnant energy with this warm up. Shake your hands off. Palms face down, lift to touch, same knee to same hand. We do this a couple times. This is a homolateral pattern and not what our body prefers, but we recognize that we sometimes slip into it. So we acknowledge it, dust our hands off, shake it off, and we cross over. The hand crosses over to touch the opposite knee, and if balance is fine, then lift the opposite arm, and you can add to it and twist. If balance is a problem, then come onto the big toe and just tap the upper thigh. And we'll do this about 16 times each side. Keep breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth. And if you want to add to it, you can touch down to the ankle. You know, making this cr crossover pattern uh, the right one for you. You can sense and feel your energy lifting. Breathe in through the nose, breathe out through the mouth, and slow it down. Bring both hands to the base of your body. Your hands can hover or touch the body. Call to mind your intention. And then on your next inhale, draw the fingertips, your breath, and your intention up through the line of your body, up overhead. Exhale, palms turn away as you smooth it out. Inhale, we'll do it two more times. Draw fingertips, the breath, and your intention up through your central meridian. Up overhead, exhale. Palms face away, smooth it out. Last one, think of this as embodying your intention. Inhale up, exhale, smooth out. And in the warm up with one finger on the navel, one finger just above the eyebrows at the center of your forehead. Lightly press in and lift up as you breathe in through the nose. And exhale through the mouth. Uh, keep doing that breath pattern. This is connecting your central meridian with your governing meridian. And when you finish that exhale, release and let it go. Shake out your legs, shake out your arms. We're going to clear the gates of the hands. Paying attention here because there are six meridians that begin or end on the hand. Take your first finger and your thumb of one hand and bring it between the bones at the base of the, between the um, pinky finger and the ring finger. And you're just lightly pressing, drawing up uh, between the bones and pinching off right at the wedding. Move up the hand uh, between the next set of fingers, pinch off. We're just going up 
between index finger and middle finger, pinch off between thumb and first finger, and draw up and pinch off. Move to the other hand as you're completed. First finger and thumb, draw up on the inside and the outside of the hand between the bones, pinch off. Just think of this as activating, uh, waking up the meridians that begin and end on the hands. Pinching off at the web, starting at the base of the hand or near the wrist and pinching off. And shake. Now step wide. You could, if you're facing me, you could step as wide as the mat. Uh, you're just going to find the right stance for you because we're coming into malasana, a squat. Heels in, toes out, hands at your heart. Take a breath in, lift up. And exhale, lower. And just come into whatever position serves you here. If you are tight, then you stop where it serves you. Wherever you're at, if you can place the elbows inside the knees and push while the knees push in and resist, lift and lengthen through the heart so that you help that spine elongate. And breathe. Keep this pelvic floor active. Lift up pelvic floor to enable to sternum. And keep breathing. And now let's place left hand on the ground, left shoulder inside of left knee as you twist and lift to the left and look up. Add wrist circles. And release, replace um, left hand now uh, on the ground, left shoulder inside left knee, twist to the right, lift the right arm up and add wrist circles. And lower, hands touch the ground as you press up to lengthen your legs, come into a forward fold and heel toe your feet together. So that the feet are now um, more like feet, uh, hip width distance apart and let your upper body hang off of your hips of the crown of the head point down. Uh, let this be this passive, beautiful stretch, adding any bend to the knees that's comfortable. Grab opposite elbows and sway back and forth. Slow your heart rate. Let this be the passive um, pose, passive opening for your hamstrings with bent knees, passive opening for your low back, and passive opening for your shoulders. Now release your hands down to the ground. Hands now come to the hips, elbows point up to the ceiling. Draw your belly towards your spine and press down through your feet to rise up with a nice straight spine. Let the arms sweep out, reach up, hands touch, exhale, hands Anjali Mudra, and release. Celtic weave. Now with the Celtic weave, all I mean by that is like a figure eight that's lying on its side. Your wrists cross as if you're making um, a figure eight that's lying down. We're going to lift our hands up overhead, do the Celtic weave down and side to side. So find Tadasana. Mountain pose. Feet are about hips with distance apart. Belly is engaged. Heart is lifted. Inhale. Arms up high. Look up. Lengthen. And then add the Celtic weave. Your wrists are crossing. And you're moving down as you exhale down. When your hands get down to your hips, twist and turn to the right. Your feet stay pointing forward. Inhale. Arms up and Celtic weave down the right side of your body. And release, come back to center, take a breath in, exhale, twist to the left, inhale, arms up high, and Celtic weave down the left side of your body. And release, and let it go. Just march in place. As we prepare to come into our tree pose, this tree pose in energy medicine yoga, we're gonna add the triple warmer hold. It's a bind for the arms. If um, you get into this pose and you find that you really need the arms for balance, then release the, um, the arm hold. If you wanna try it, then uh, we'll use our right leg as our anchor leg. Take your left hand to touch your uh, right ribs. Take your right hand to rest um, just above the elbow. And then make sure that you're not hunched or rolled forward. So even with this position, lift your heart up, pull your shoulder blades together. Shift your weight to the right leg and become light on the left. Draw the bent knee away from the midline and connect the heel of the bent leg to the standing leg. And then choose. If balance is tricky, you might keep the ball of the foot on the ground for some support. 
you might have just the big toe touching. You could come into the single leg balance at the calf or with assistance, uh, you might place the foot on the upper inner thigh. We just don't place the foot on the knee because you're adding pressure. And the only way you'll know which, which position for your foot is right for you is if you experiment. And if you fall out of it, come back and join us and place it at a different position. To help you, let your eyes rest at a static point on the wall, not at me, because I'll be wobbling. And keep your lower half of your body firm and engaged. Lift up nice and tall through the spine if you can. Pull the shoulder blades together on your back. Keep your collarbones broad and breathe. Let go of your arms and let go of your legs and release and relax and sway. Really take the time to let it go because um, sometimes with the balance pose, you certainly uh, contract all of your muscles to help hold you there. But we try to keep the breath flowing because that breath helps sustain you in your balance poses. Uh, but sometimes we forget. All right, anchor legs now, the left leg. Toes both point forward. Establish your um, hold. So now it's the opposite. The right hand now comes to touch your left ribs. Left hand sweeps across and rests on the elbow. Shift your weight to the left leg. Become light on the right. As you draw the knee away from the midline, connect the heel of the bent leg in some shape or form. Experiment. Maybe the ball of the foot touches. Maybe it's just the big toe. Maybe it's the calf. And maybe with assistance, you, you lift it up to the upper inner thigh. Find what works. It's probably different um, on each side of the body. And that's all right. So tune in, engage the lower half of your body, squeeze your core, squeeze your glutes. Legs are strong and active. And then lift up tall through the spine by lifting up through the heart, pull shoulder blades together, collarbones are broad, and breathe. Wobble away, wobbling makes you stronger. And eventually release the hands and then release the legs and let it all go and be as soft and as flowing and as fluid as like seaweed and water. You'd be good at uh, releasing a pose uh, just as we practice to be disciplined in getting into the pose. All right. The um, yin yang, yin yang uh, clear. So. Let's just jump into this. Palms face forward, feet are in alignment with the hips, core is engaged, heart is open as you inhale, arms out wide and up high. Rise up and lengthen and look up, and then let the right hand touch the top of the left hand, and then just trace down the outside of the body. This is tracing down the yon meridians, yon energy comes down from the sun, from the sky, goes into the earth. Pull across your belt meridian. Hands touch the outsides of your hips as they press down. Trace down the outsides of your legs. That's the gallbladder meridian off the edge of the pinky toe and shake your hands. Two fingers now come to the inside of your big toe and you inhale and trace up the inside of the foot and the calf. And this is yin energy. Yin energy comes up from the earth, flows up through us. Now this is the spleen meridian, come to the armpits and then down. Um, to the mid side ribs and release. We'll do the other hand. Inhale, arms up high. Reach up, lengthen through your spine. This time the left hand sits on top of the right hand. As you lightly trace down outsides of the arms, outsides of the shoulders, ribs, pull across the belt meridian, the only horizontal meridian. Uh, hands to the outer hips as you slide and press down the outsides of your legs um, off the pinky toe. When we move with the directionality and the flow of the meridians, now inhale, yin energy up, the inside of the feet, calves, then we strengthen, their flow. Play around at the hip crease, up the side ribs to the armpit and back down to the mid side ribs and circle and release. All right, let's, oh, I'm sorry, we forget. We, we end with uh, one last sun breath. Rise up, reach up, look up, and hands touch overhead. And as they come down to your heart in Anjali Mudra, uh, release the palms and just let the fingertips and the thumbs touch or tent. As you place the index fingers at your, uh, where your collarbones almost meet, 
place the thumbs at your sternum and just breathe in deeply. This is called the triple warmer mudra. Uh, placement of your hands in this position and touching in at these places of the body connects the heart uh, to the triple warmer meridian. And release, let it go. Sun salutations, if you have blocks, use them. If you don't have blocks, you can go without or you can use a substitute. Uh, a full toilet paper roll works um, or a hardbound book will work to support you, to help lift you. And you can pass all together. Sun salutations are a connection of 12 poses um, that are a beautiful ancient practice that takes your body through all of the movements um, that are in a yoga practice uh, done fast. It is meant to um, increase your, um, your heart rate and your energy and done slowly. It is more mm, like a meditation, like a prayer. We'll do it slow to orient you and get you familiar with it. So stand in Tadasana, feet or hips with distance apart. Legs are strong, lift the kneecaps, pull your belly in, point your tailbone down, lift your shoulders up to your ears, roll them down as shoulder blades come together on your back and palms face forward, shin level with the ground. On an inhale, lift those arms up overhead and look up Urdhva Stasana. On an exhale, hinge at the hips and begin to bow forward with a long spine. Add a bend to your knees to meet your hamstrings wherever they're at, don't hurt them. In your forward fold, Uttanasana, let the crown of the head point down and your hips lift. Inhale, rise halfway. Ardha Uttanasana is a long spine, hands on knees. As you pull your belly to the spine and pull your shoulder blades together on your back, let this warm your body up. Exhale, back to your forward fold. Hands will frame the feet or touch the blocks. As you exhale, step your right foot back, straight leg lunge. Lower the hips, lift the heart, lift your gaze. Maybe uh, rely on the legs rather than fingers. And then release blocks, hands touch the mat. As you step back to find downward facing dog, take time to warm up in this pose. You might bend both knees deeply and then begin to lengthen. You could take one heel down and bend the opposite knee and then switch. Let's go walking the dog. Uh, you could swing your hips side to side and then check in with your head and neck. Let it be heavy. Take one breath cycle in downward facing dog as you lift your hips up and push the weight back towards your heels. On your next inhale, shift your body forward to plank. And keep breathing while you squeeze all your muscles. Draw everything to the midline. Pull your core in. Squeeze your glutes, strong shoulders, push your heels back. And then you decide the knees might come down or you might stay in full plank. As you slowly exhale and lower, elbows close to ribs. Touch the tops of the feet down, firm up your legs, elbows close to your body, and inhale, lift your heart, let your back work here. Lift your fingertips, maybe lift your whole hand. Exhale, lower, tuck your toes. Inhale to table, and exhale, lift the knees, lift the hips, downward facing dog. And every time you move through down dog, see if you can come a little deeper. Lengthen the spine, add length to the legs. On your next inhale, right leg rises behind you. Exhale, bend the right knee, pull that leg close to your ribs, and step it forward. Take your time, take as many steps as you need to, to transition between that pose. And then when you come to the straight leg lunge, lower your hips, see about lifting your heart and lifting your gaze. And then press off, back foot, to join the front foot. Back and forward fold. Hands on hips, elbows up. Pull your belly to your spine as you rise. Arms sweep up. Look up at a little back bend. Hands touch. Exhale, Anjali Mudra. Take a breath in. And take a breath out. And release. Let's check my time. 
uh, we need to move on. I like to do several sun salutations, but this is a short class. All right, let's come on into um, an energy medicine yoga version of a sun salutation. So at the top of your mat, hinge at the hips and find yourself come all the way down into a forward fold. Bend the knees if you need to for hamstrings. Forward fold Uttanasana. Hands frame the foot. As you step the left foot back, straight leg lunge. Place this left hand on the ground near the front of the right foot or on a block to give you, you a little bit more room. We're gonna twist to the right knee. So excuse me, my, showing my backside, but right hand to hip, uh, rotate to twist and lift the arm up. And then add wrist circles. Look up if that's all right. Breathe, tune in. How does your body feel in this position? And then release. The hand comes down. Both hands are framing this front foot. Spin the back foot to completely connect with the back of the mat. As you rise up and place the um, right forearm on um, right thigh, palm facing up. Left hand on hip, open this side body to the long edge of your mat. Uh, hand comes to your shoulder. Hands go straight up to noon or at an angle for Utita, parts of the Kanasana, extended side angle. Just tune in, breathe here. Lengthen and release as you pivot onto the ball of the back foot. Both hands come down to frame the front foot. Lower the back left knee and right knee meets um, left knee. Find yourself in table pose. Let your hands move slightly forward of your shoulders, knees under hips and toes tucked. Move through cat cow, which is the um, forward extension, uh, forward and backward extension of the spine. The inhale, lift your hips, lower your ribs, and lift your heart through the shoulders. This is your cow back, you're inhaling. And exhale, reverse. Point the tailbone down. Lift the um, ribs up. Lift the back spine, pull your chin to your chest, and exhale. Move through that two more times on your own. Follow your breath rhythm. The inhale is this cow back. And the exhale, when you're ready for it, when your body signals it's time to exhale, is this compression. One more time. Go to the fullest range of movement in your spine. This is so healthy for our spine. And exhale, Whew, completely let it go. And now let's just move and flow between uh, child's pose and table. So inhale, no action. Exhale, sink your hips to your heels. Follow your breath rhythm. Finish that exhale, forehead touches. And inhale up to table. You can release the tops of your feet. Exhale, sink your body into modified child's pose. Your knees are still parallel. Finish the exhale, touch your forehead. Inhale, rise up to table one last time. Exhale, child's pose, touch down, forehead touches. That's a really important energy point right at the center of your forehead. Toes tuck. Lift the knees up, lift the body up, downward facing dog, point your tailbone up, come deeper into this pose. As you push your shoulders away from the earth, spread your hands out wide like a starfish to protect your wrists. You're pushing the weight of your hips up and back, pushing your heart toward your thighs and you're lengthening. And now we will take the left leg up and do the other side. So left leg is forward in a straight leg lunge, right leg is back. Take time to lower your hips, lift your heart, lift your gaze. And now right hand touches the ground or rests on a block to give you a little bit more room in the torso to twist. Left hand to left hip, add the twist, and then lift up, left arm to 12 o'clock. Look up if that feels okay in your neck. Lower your hips and breathe, add some wrist circles. And release down. As you come down, spin the back foot to completely connect with the earth. We are preparing to rise up into extended side angle. 
Uh, left forearm to left thigh, palm faces up, right hand to right hip, turn your whole body to the long edge of the mat, and extend your arm as you're ready. Try to feel the line of energy from your back, right heel, up your body through uh, right fingertips. There's no bend in the arm or the leg. Keep breathing. Woo. And then release as you pivot onto the ball of the back foot. Hands come down to frame the front leg, back knee lowers. Left knee meets back knee and move through three rounds of cat cow on your own. Really taking advantage of this pose to extend the spine to the fullest range of motion available to you, not entering into pain, but really recognizing that breath leads movement that breath tells you when it's time to change the flow. I've got one more for the, to make my third. And then my exhale. Return to neutral table and we'll flow between child's pose and table pose. Let the tops of your feet touch the mat. Take the breath in, no action. Exhale, sink into a modified child's pose. Forehead touches the ground. Inhale to table. Make sure that your timing matches your breath if it's different from mine. Get the full extension of child's pose. Let the forehead touch. And rise, and last one. Forehead touches as you exhale, modified child's pose. And inhale up to table as we prepare to transition to downward facing dog by tucking the toes, lifting the knees, and lifting the sit bones up toward the ceiling. Making an upside down V with your body. Press down particularly through the index finger and thumb and the finger mounds to help you with your wrists. And try pointing the tailbone up to the sky and pushing those heels down to the degree to which your uh, legs have warmed up. And now bend your knees and walk your feet to your hands and find yourself in Uttanasana. Crown of the head points down, let your hands meet behind your calves uh, and just breathe here in your forward fold, take advantage of this inversion. And then hands on hips, elbows press up to the ceiling, pull your belly to your spine and rise up with a straight spine. Arms sweep up, look up, reach up, hands touch, exhale them to your heart, full breath in, and full breath out, and come to a seated position. Um, bring the soles of your feet together for Baddha Konasana. Uh, let your hands first rest right at your ankles and just rock side to side on your sit bones just to give a, a little warm up to the pelvis to get the blood flowing and to create some space. And in that rocking, try to reach up long through your spine so that you're already giving uh, a slight forward tilt to the pelvis. We're going to come forward in a, in a bow. Um, your hands can either rest here at your ankles or be here outside your hips as a way to press your spine forward. Just experiment, find which one works for you. Take a breath in and lift up tall through the spine, lift your heart up. And then exhale, think about keeping your spine long as one unit rather than any bending. Push your heart towards uh, the feet. Keep your neck in alignment with your spine rather than bowing your head forward. And let these hands press you and help you to get to your fullest forward fold. It doesn't matter how far you get, as long as you meet your edge, you're getting the benefit of this. And stay here and breathe wherever you get to. Think about pushing the heart forward rather than bowing your head. And then release and let go. Now take two fingers together and your thumb. Bring the two fingers to the downward slant. Uh, I have a bunion, so it's easy for me to see. But it just on the inside, the downward slant of um, 
your side of your foot. On both feet, that's the uh, end of the, that's the spleen meridian, it's not the end, it's spleen three. And your thumb will go right about here, which is kidney three, um, if it's between the ankle bone diagonally and the heel. Okay, and, and it's okay if you don't have the exact right spot. This is an acupuncture with a needle. Think about this as uh, creating a circuit. You're connecting the spleen meridian and the kidney meridian with this posture. Keep your spine tall. You are in the pose of Baddha Konasana. And this is a light touch. You're not pressing hard. Uh, it's really a light touch, almost as though you are uh, checking to see if you can feel the pulse. Um, by, 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 by placing your fingers in this um, position, and it's like a circuit, uh, drawing together two powerful energy points. Keep lifting up through the heart, and exhaling smoothly. Excellent. And now extend your left leg long and bend your right knee. We're coming into a Janu Shushasana pose. Really press the uh, left heel down and pull the left toes towards the left knee and keep it active. We're gonna do um, spine circles. So uh, opening up hips and uh, the spine. So hands on hips, this is your foundation. So really press down through the outer knee and the outer uh, uh, heel. And then just begin, start small, you exhale forward and you inhale as you rotate back. You decide if you would like to go fast or slow, uh, big uh, spinal circles or smaller spinal circles. Use your core, rely on your core. You can feel it. Rely on the muscles of the legs. And breathe, exhale forward, inhale as you circle back. Tune into this. There is repetition in these poses. Tune into your foundation. Tune into your breath. Keep that spine nice and long and tall. And activate your core to support you in this. You might uh, find that your circles get a little bit bigger as you keep repeating this. And eventually release and let it go. Switch legs. Uh, remember this leg is long and active and engaged. Press down through the right heel, pull the right toes toward the knee and equally push down through this bent knee. Um, this uh, foot is flexed and active. Hands are at the hips. Pull your belly in and up and then begin slow circles. It might be different on each side. That's totally normal. One hip might be uh, tighter than the other hip. Meet your body where it's at and see where you get to. Keep the breath flowing. Movement matches breath. So we exhale forward and inhale back. Try to keep your spine long. Try to keep the core active. A lot happening here. Keep pressing through the right heel of the foot. Keep your legs active. Try to make your circles increasingly bigger. It's okay if everything shifts and moves. Uh, it's your intention. And circle one more time and eventually uh, release that and let it go. And just extend your legs long. Pedal your feet, bend your knees, and breathe with ease. All right, let's come down to our backs. Uh, to come down to our backs, we're gonna add, use our core and build core strength. We're gonna uh, add that triple warmer hold again. So take your right hand and touch your left ribs. Uh, left hand comes around and touches just above the elbows. And lift up through the spine. So your legs are long, tall spine, lifted heart, uh, broad collarbones. Legs are long, um, press your heels into the mat and pull your toes towards your knees. Keep everything active, core is very active. As we're gonna go down halfway, pull back up, lean down halfway, and then go down all the way. 
And if that doesn't work for you, then you meet your body where it's at and you release to a lying down pose. Take a breath in, pull the belly to the spine, activate the legs, push down through the heels and hinge at the hips to extend halfway down. Breathe and feel that. Press down through heels as you rise back up. Keep breathing. This is working. You need your core for everything. Take a breath in. Pause and exhale halfway down. Wherever you get to, you pause and you breathe. And you feel that middle core, upper core, lower core. And then you lower slowly all the way down. Feel free to release the bind to help catch you. <laughs> Don't get hurt. Build core slowly, incrementally. And once you get down to the ground, release the weight, bend your knees, and take a nice big deep breath in as you let go of effort. This is constructive rest. My teacher said to me recently, if every one of us could spend five minutes in the morning and five minutes in the evening in this pose of constructive rest, we would have so much improvement in our spinal health. See if you can swing that. You can always let the knees touch. Let the breath settle and really tune in to how your energy changes when you go from standing to seated to supine. All right, if you have the block, put the block between your knees. If you don't have a block, don't worry about it. We're gonna do a spinal uh, twist. So squeeze the block between the knees and the thighs. That's just helping you to keep them active. Send your arms out wide at shoulder height to a T. Lift your feet up off the ground, uh, lengthen through the collarbone, and on an exhale, let the knees fall as one unit to the left. Let the weight rest something on something, an ankle, a thigh, and then draw your right shoulder blade back down toward the earth and turn your head to look at your right arm. And notice that this is a warm down, this is a transition pose. Breathe into this. Let go into this, let this opening happen. Pull your head to center, use your core now to help you pull those legs up safely. You're back in alignment, and this is where you're meant to be, so just take a breath and notice. And as you're ready to exhale, you're gonna let the knees fall to the right, all the way over to the right. And draw, once they're down and resting, uh, draw your left shoulder blade down to the earth as you turn to look at your right, up, I'm sorry, your left arm. And just find some ease here. It's not that the pose has to be in any particular way. You're going to meet your body where it's at. Your left shoulder blade doesn't have to touch the earth. It's moving. You're drawing it back toward the mat. Pull your head to center. Use your core and pull the knees up to center and release and let it go. All right, we're gonna to move towards Shavasana, but we'll do one um, last energy clearing um, before you move into Shavasana, the last pose where you lay flat on your back and release all effort. Rub your hands together, generate some heat, and then place the um, palms over your eyes. The heel of the palm is on your cheekbone and the fingers are kind of draped over your hairline, covering your eyes, just breathe in. Breathe in this energy that you have lifted and created and stirred up. Sense it, let it restore you. And, and holding your hands in this eye, I'm sorry, holding your hands over the eyes in this position is touching many important energy points related to several meridians. This is very calming, very soothing. Feel free to leave your hands in this position as long as feels good for you. To come towards Shavasana, you're invited to extend your legs long and walk your heels out to opposite corners of the mat and flop your feet open. You can keep the hands on the eyes if that is comfortable for you, or you can come into traditional Shavasana, which is your arms extended long, resting about 10 to 12 inches away from the body with palms facing up. And we stay here 
for a bit with eyes closed, with attention turned inward, to rest in stillness, to absorb the benefits of your practice. Stay here in stillness and in silence and I will call you back to attention with the ring of a bell. right where you are, doing nothing but listening to the sound of this bell. Let your attention follow it as it begins and dissipates. And I invite you to take a deep breath in and let that breath animate and awaken you back to your senses. As you invite small movement to the fingers, and to bend at the wrists. Likewise, wiggle the toes and roll your ankles. You might turn your head slowly one way and then the other. And as you're ready, allowing your body to move in whatever way feels good, that might be a full body stretch with arms overhead 
It might mean bringing your knees into your chests and curling inward. Just tune in, let your body lead. Eventually you will bend your knees and roll to one side and just pause there. Maybe uh, an elbow supports the side of your head. Keep your knees bent, pull them in a little closer. This is the fetal position. Keeping your attention inward for a moment longer, linger here. And just tune in and ask yourself, how do you feel? And then ask yourself, how do you feel in your body? Might be the same and might be different. When you're ready, press off with your hand and an elbow to bring yourself upright and to sit in a cross-legged position, um, but keep your attention inward, your eyes lowered. Once you're settled, allow your hands to meet at your heart in Anjali Mudra. Press palms together, fingertips point up, thumbs rest at your heart, at your sternum, elbows extend out to the side. Bow your head to your heart. I have a quote to share, to share from Albert Einstein. He said, we are composed of energy and energy fields which interconnect us to all things. When you practice energy medicine yoga, you're learning the language of energy and that's the language of your body. We tune in. Take a moment to call to mind your intention that you set at the beginning of the practice. Take it off the mat with you. Keep your intention at the front of your mind, at the front of your heart, and repeat it to yourself anytime you recall it during the day. We get to move in the direction of our choosing. Let an intention be a guide for your energy and your efforts. And now we we'll seal the practice with a single chant of Om. Om is a universal sound symbolizing our connection to one another and to the universe. We'll share one round of breath together and then inhale to chant on the exhale. Joining in if you're familiar and comfortable, otherwise just listening. Take a big full deep breath in and a big full exhale, perhaps audible, out. And now we inhale to chant. Oh. Raise your thumbs to your forehead. And uh, we share the word namaste, which means the light in me sees and honors the very same light in each one of you. Namaste.